Ladies and gentlemen, the American German Bulldog Nation, I have decided, as you know, I have been talking about the Butcher Pakistan book. I've been talking about the Durrani litigation now for 11 years. And we have shared so much information out there. And the tri-state media ignores it. The national media ignores it. But we're going to keep plugging. Uh, we're talking to folks at Hollywood. Uh, when this story is finally told, it's going to blow the world away. Because unlike Aaron Brockovich and Dark Waters and Civil Jury, this case involves not just or, or um, the uh, the guy. What, what's that? What's that Netflix series about the the surgeon, Doctor Death, Doctor Death. This not only involves 580 victims plus of Durrani doing unnecessary spine surgeries, it involves the most egregious, terrible battle with the legal and court system that anybody could ever endure. But I've decided that I'm going to start interviewing Durrani victims that want to talk. And uh, we're lining them up. And I hope to do one every day. Uh, but today I'm blessed to have here Valerie Reeves. Valerie, where do you live? Williamsburg, Ohio. All right. Valerie, we keep a chart on each one of you, and uh, I've communicated with you from the beginning. And I'm looking at this, Valerie, and this is what we keep track of the surgeries that you had. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight surgeries from 2010 to 2013 with Dr. Atik Durrani. Is that correct? Yes. It's unbelievable. Now, before I ask you some questions, we keep track of significant factors that indicate something that they did wrong or bad. And on your chart, by the way, you're right up there. I think the the the, the uh, Tanya McQuarrie, I think, had 13 surgeries, but you're you're in the top 10 with eight. Shanty shuffle. That means when Dr. Durrani would not tell Valerie and Dr. Shanty would do the surgery, they didn't know that. BMP2, which causes high risk of cancer, never told him that. Buxano, he wasn't trained to do. MRSA, because she was, she was exposed to Hank, the German Shepherd dog. Uh, failed hardware, because of her weight, and as I always like to point out, don't feel bad, Valor, every American's overweight. Because of her weight, she shouldn't have had the surgery. Threatened her with paralysis if she didn't have the surgery. A smoker. He's one of the few orthopedics that didn't want to make you quit smoking before he did the surgery. Hypertension, high blood pressure. Late dictation, all these surgeries. Operative report, 79 days late. Had ever revision surgery, false diagnosis, and complication from a graft surgery. That's all you had done to you, Valerie. <laughs> now, now, Valerie, when did you first learn and know that you thought your your case should be looked at. Were you one of the ones that went after he was arrested? No, I had seen. Tell us your story. When did when did you first find out about? It? Um, I I'd, I'd been having problems out of my back anyway, but I was sitting in my live living room and you came on the TV. All right. And they showed him getting arrested, and I fell to the floor, and I cried. Now, that was in 2013, Valerie. So that would have been, and it was in, I think it was in um, July of 2013. So your last surgery was in May. So mm -hmm. up until then, were you believing everything Durrani told you? Mm-hmm. Okay. So why did you have the original, sir? Like, why did you go to Dr. Durrani in the beginning? Um, I was having problems out of my back. Um. Had you treated with anybody else? I got treated um, with Mayfield. Okay. And they went in and took a disc out. Okay. And then after that, I started having more problems. So I decided to go with a different doctor. Okay. Um, do you recall whether, because we had this come up a lot, Mayfield. Mayfield testified against Durrani until he left town. Then they wouldn't testify anymore. It's kind of funny. But did you... Did, did Mayfield tell you that there was anything else they could do for you? No. Okay. So you go to Durrani. What's Durrani say to you? Like, before, back, go back to the first surgery. What did Durrani say to you? Tell me he could fix my problems. He, it, it's a common theme. So 
I, I can kind of lead you a little bit because we're not in the courtroom. He always made it sound like he was the Savior. So did, yeah. he sold himself as being your Savior, correct? Mm -hmm. Um. You didn't know anything about his background. By the way, did you see all the things on his wall like made him look like the king of mm -hmm. orthopedics? Mm -hmm. You didn't know anything about his background, did you? No. I trusted him completely. So just just tell me your Durrani story. Like just from the time you met him, take me through some of these surgeries or what you know, just the best you can, your own words. Uh first surgery I went in it was the day before Thanksgiving. And they did my neck first and <clears throat> went through the front the first time. I had two, I've had two cervical, cervical surgeries. Um, after that, I went to physical therapy and my problems were worse. The pain was worse. Um, I went back, he ordered an MRI. I had the MRI done and he came back and he said, um, if you don't have this surgery again, we got to go in and fix your back. We have to do a fusion and, and put titanium rods in. And if you don't have it done, you're going to be in a wheelchair within six months. Another common thing mm -hmm. that he told people then. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I was terrified, but at the same time, I trusted him. So I went with it. And then after that, it got my problems got worse i mean he did surgery on my lower back it looks like a patchwork quilt my back does <clears throat> and then he cut through my side on my hip why he did that i don't know um the last surgery he <clears throat> did he um put the graph bone in uh -huh. and it bursted inside of my back and I went for three weeks in terrible pain and shocking that you would not believe um, because when it blew apart, pieces of it went into my nerve sacs along my spinal cord. So I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything without being shocked. Um, I couldn't even take a shower. That's how bad it was. And then I tried to get a hold of Dr. Durrani for three weeks, and they, that's when they brought Shanti in, and he did the emergency surgery to take some of the graft bone out, but there was pieces he could not reach, and they glued those pieces down in hopes that they won't come loose. Valerie, when he got arrested and left his practice in 2013, was he giving you narcotic prescriptions? Yes. Did you have a hard time finding a replacement for him? Because I know a lot, a lot of our clients did. Did you have a hard time? Yeah. Because the law, when you change doctors, it causes bells and whistles. It does. Know. It does. And I became addicted to those pills. He was giving me very high doses. <clears throat> what, what, what was he giving you? He was giving me um, 20 and 30 milligrams of oxycodone, um, 60 milligrams three times a day of morphine extended release. Um, after I had surgery, they gave me even stronger um, pills. What are you on now? Ibuprofen. Can't get prescription medicine? Nope. I don't want it. You don't want it? I became addicted and it was horrible what? to get off of them. I had a heart attack. Did you have a primary care physician? Yes. Who was it? Um, Dr. Heindel. Is he the one that referred you to Durrani? No. Okay. Um, were you aware, like, this is another common thing, Durrani would send letters to primary care physicians lying about your situation. You never got to see those, did you? No. That's, that's, that's a common theme in the litigation that he sends these letters, but you never see your letters. You never got to see your radiology films either, did you? No. Were you aware that he lied all the time about what your MRIs were showing? No. That's another common thing. Like he would say you had severe stenosis when you didn't have severe stenosis and things like that. Um, did you, were you disabled or were you working before you met Durrani? I had just became disabled. Okay. Um, 
you, for lack of a better words, and I, I'm not saying this to um, uh, shame you in any way, shape, or form. Um, you probably have more cash than I do right now. But would you would you say that you came from a lower socioeconomic group? Mm -hmm. Yes. Another common thing. Um, Durrani preyed upon Medicare, Medicaid, you know, people. He was number two in the state of Ohio, by the way. Hmm. Billy, Medicaid, Medicare. Number two of all the all the orthopedics. Um, and he took advantage of you, like he did everybody. What, what's, your, what's your condition now? Try to tell us what your condition is now, the best you can. I can walk for about 10 minutes. Um, if you notice, when I walk, I walk humped over, and if that's because if I stand up straight, the pain shoots all the way up down, up and down my legs. It feels like somebody's ripping my muscles out. Um, Valerie, um, you filed, we filed on your behalf a lawsuit July 18th, 2014. And then you're one of the ones that we refiled in Hamilton County because yeah. we got Hamilton on August 15th, 16. So it's been 10 years since Butler, eight years since Hamilton County. Have you had your trial yet? No. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to share some with you. This woman had eight surgeries from Durrani. Not one of them is outside the statute of limitations or the statute of repose within four years. So she gets to go into a courtroom and argue that Durrani committed eight surgeries that she didn't need or caused by the ones he screwed up. All of those problems, I went through that list. It's been eight years. Ohio has a rule that from the date the case is filed to a conclusion it's supposed to be over in three, in one more year, she will be three times that amount. Were you aware, Valerie, that we're winning 80% of the trials based upon emails and whatnot? Yeah. Um, how does it make you feel, Valerie, that you have been suffering in pain for eight years and you're still waiting? Makes me feel like they put me below them, like I'm nothing. Um, but I refuse to give up. Good for you, because I can always tell all of us we got two choices. We quick up. Now, Valerie, have you received an offer from Durrani's insurance company, Medical Protective? No. <laughs> you were part of the settlement with Westchester. Yes. Um, is it a fair statement that that is it near enough to compensate what you've been through? Yes. By the way, for those that haven't been following this story, we're averaging a million dollars a verdict. Just so you know, these are million dollar cases. Um, you live on disability? Um, SSI. SSI. Do you own your own home? Yes. Okay. Is it mortgaged? No. Okay. Section 8? No. Okay. It's paid off. It's paid off. Well, good for you. You're doing better than most. <laughs> um, do you struggle with the current economic client with inflation and everything else? Is that is that had you to change your your lifestyle? Yes. Sometimes we can't afford to buy groceries. It's a toss between paying your electric bill and buying groceries. Valerie, um, I came up with a question which I hope, oh, by the way, before I ask the final question, um, not only do we win 80% of these cases, win 70% of them, excuse me, usually the defense wins 95% of a med mal case in Hamilton County. We're winning 80%, so we got 165% swing the other way. Before you file, people talk about frivolous cases, you have to have an orthopedic spine surgeon. This is a 21-page affidavit of merit from Dr. Keith Wilkie, our orthopedic spine doctor, who testifies in all these cases. And we also have a neurosurgeon, Dr. Stephen Bloomfield, and we've got a neuroradiologist, Dr. Sainé. And they're in a trial right now with three, three cases where he did surgeries on minors. 
So 21 page affidavit in this case. If, if you don't think Valerie's case doesn't have merit. Valerie, I got two questions. Were you aware that any case filed in Hamilton County, now you filed yours in 2016 in Hamilton County. Were you aware that any case that was filed in 2020, 2019, 2018, and 2017, or 2016, by anything that's not a Durrani case, like all the other cases, those cases are tried and over with, but yours not. No. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Now, my last question to you, Valerie, and this is the last question that we ask every victim when they're on the stand at a trial. And you haven't gone to trial yet, but you're gonna get the last question. Valerie, think back the way you were, even when you had a little bit of a back issue before Durrani, and think about where you are now. What do you miss the most? Picking on my grandkids and holding them. Working. I'd do anything to go back to work, but I can't. I can't stand for too long of a time. I can't sit for, I'm hurting really bad just from sitting. I don't sleep. I'm up all hours of the night. If I had to do it all over, I never would have had them. Ever. And I'm crying because <laughs> I'm going through this amongst all the other victims. And I feel like you're the only one that's rooting for us and helping us. And if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't we wouldn't be heard. I, I appreciate that, Valerie, and I want you to know that stories like yours is why I keep doing it. You know, it is the most diabolically evil thing. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm glad you cried. I want I want people to see your emotion. It's important. You're representative of everybody, and and I, I want to say this to you, Valerie, which you. Folks, what she said here, this is the most extraordinary group of people anyone could be so honored to represent. And I want you all to know that as bad, and she, and she just expressed it, as bad as each one of these individuals hurts, they always bring up how they feel so bad for everyone else too. They, they truly understand that one is just as bad as the other. One just as bad as the other. So, Valerie, I want to tell you something. The purpose of these interviews is to keep pounding and pounding away at the media, the court system, the legal system, all of it, until the day we get our justice. And we're going to get it. So you keep hanging in there. As I always tell you guys, we can either quit or keep fighting and I will live in a barn before I quit financing this thing. <laughs> I might, you know what? I might be out in Bengals before Bengals games with the 10 cups and donate to the Durrani cause. But anyway, Valerie, thank you for coming in and God bless you. I gotta give you a hug. Thanks for having me. A hug gentle. I don't wanna hurt your back. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in and watching this, folks. More interviews to come.